Salamancer. You're watching. What are you watching, man? Oh my gosh, I don't even know. Definitely a seven right now. Anyway, <laughs> this is going to be uh, our, our good old friend Trees Fortress 2 versus the Cowabunga Pizza Party. It's UGC 6v6. And we're seeing um, a couple of missed jumps on the rollout. But it's going to be Trees in the blue, Cowabunga Pizza Party in the red. I'm not sure what the plus dot dot actually means, but of course it seems like a Ninja Turtles reference, so I'm hoping I'm not wrong about that. Because Ninja Turtles were like the greatest thing from my childhood ever. So, uh, right, I, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a YouTube horror for a second. Thumbs up if you like Ninja Turtles. Just straight up. Straight up. Put the thumbs up on the video if you like Ninja Turtles, okay? Do it. If you don't like Ninja Turtles, put a thumbs down, and, and then come out in the comments and tell us why you don't like the Ninja Turtles. And pretty much just, like, be a jerk, okay? Because you're a jerk if you don't like Ninja Turtles. You are a total jerk. Get out. Just get out. Anyway, <laughs> mid-fight is pretty much ending up in the favor of the Cowabunga Pizza Party right now. They've capped it. And have an Uber. Their opponents on Trees Fortress do as well. Where is the Sticky Trap going to be is the question. Oh, no Sticky Trap. Scout's actually coming in and forcing an Uber. Very well done. And Trees Fortress, I think they're going to try and turn this into some aggression. They might get a kill or two out of it. Or at least force the Uber out of the red team. But, ooh, good work by uh, Poizo Kane and his pocket soldier there. They escaped into the garage. Their opponent's garage, actually. And have not had their... Uh, it's a soldier float, by the way. Oh, the pocket soldier. And they have not had to pop the Uber. But the problem with the play here... They're thinking about going for a back cap. And that's not going to work. Because they are being uh, slowed down by the soldier over here. So... <coughs> oh, nice shots. It's going to get this kill for sure. There you go. Taking down Crab9. Um, but no, the problem here, of course, is that they've lost mid, and actually they are getting back captured. Medic is way out of position now, so even though they might be able to try and mount a defense at their last point, they're not going to have the med here. Uh, they have taken down uh, JD Mayoshioka, which I, I don't even know where that came from. But this is such a bad position right now for the, the soldier and the, and the medic here for the red team. They're behind enemy lines. They're trying to get back to their own second point. Uh, and their opponents are going to be spawning right here. I mean, <laughs> they just walked by their opponent's spawn with a scout trying to help out, and they actually do manage to stop that, so they're coming in from behind, might be able to get the cap, but they've lost their med already. Uh, and in comes Trees Fortress 2. They're going to try and get this point captured. They're so close, but no, the, the uh, soldier does go down. There you go. Crab finishing off the cap, keeping the demo man away from him. So uh, Trees Fortress 2 capitalizing on a little bit of a mistake by their opponents, and that mistake really uh, was kind of twofold. First off, they they did a good job of trying to preserve the Uber, but they preserved it for too long. Um, Poizo Kane was so focused on keeping his Uber that his team died without him ever popping it. Uh, he and his pocket got separated from the rest of his team, and his team just went down one by one to two Trees Fortress 2, and they died. So they, they tried to go for the back cap, but by that point it was too late. A uh, good rollout here by Diz, trying to do some damage to his opponents. Probably should have used a sticky launcher there to get a couple of good hits off. Um, on the invading Trees Fortress team. But he's going to start doing some damage now as they are on the point. And the thing about uh, playing like really high level sixes, Diz would not really have gotten away with that kind of damage. You know, standing there. Oh, is that a crit's coming in? It is. But uh, I don't think they're going to be. Oh, wow. I actually got two kills. So I was going to say they're not going to be in position to do a lot of damage, but they actually were. Poison Kane didn't die, so the medic is still alive. Where is he? Where is he? Here we go. He's going to be sitting back on the second point of Granary. Um, don't remember what I was saying earlier. Something fairly important? I don't know. Oh, yeah, uh, the, the spam that Demo Man was doing. He would have been called out as being in there. Somebody would have chased him down. Spam would have been a lot quicker. Um, right now, Scout 1v1 going over here as the Uber is popped for Poizo Kane. So watch the kill feed here. One of those scouts is going to go down. Chicken McBoners, actually. The scout who died. And uh, I have no problem saying that name. That's hilarious. Uh, professional Seagull backing up here with the crits right now. He almost has it ready. Did not die to the Uber there from Cowabunga Pizza Party. So they are going to push back in with this. I think he's going to probably crits Crab again. Oh, going to be huge crits, actually. Three players down right away. The Ned actually still alive, getting chased and not finished off. So Poison King stayed alive. But, man, you got to love seeing... Uh, wait, is that just... Trees, what just even happened? Trees just back capped their way to victory again. Oh, man. It's pretty ridiculous. Okay, so 
this is not the highest level of competitive TF2. This is actually fairly low level, and I, I don't mean to insult the players playing in it, but this is definitely not like ESCA invite. So uh, people do continue to ask me because, and, and this is cool. I want you to keep asking these questions. I love answering these kind of questions because what it means to me is that more and more new people are getting into watching TF2, and that's great. But people have been asking like, so what? What is the, um, you know, what's the best league? What's kind of the order of the leagues? What do the leagues even do? And uh, for 6v6 in North America, there's really two leagues right now. There's UGC and there's ESEA. UGC is uh, it's a free-to-play league. You don't have to pay to play. Uh, there's not much of a prize pot, I don't think. Um, and you tend to see some pretty low-level, like, like new, totally new to 6v6 type teams. Uh, a lot of them maybe have played Highlander before, and they just started getting into 6v6. So you see a lot of that kind of uh, inexperienced teams playing in UGC 6v6. And then as they get a little more experience, and they're like, okay, we want to take this seriously, then they start playing in the ESEA League. And ESEA, you have to pay to play. Even at the lowest level of Open, you have to pay to play. Um, but Uber Advantage right now, big Uber Advantage for the Pizza Party, so they should be able to get in here and do some damage. Probably take the point. They are going to have to push against a, a Heavy and a, sen a Sniper, I'm sorry, which is a tough push to make. Why aren't they pushing right now? They've got six players up and an Uber Advantage. They need to push. Um, this is another thing you'll see at, at a UGC. Uh, instead of, like, an ESEA invite, they'd just be like, okay, we're pushing, now, go. And they'd go in, they'd do some damage. And instead, you're seeing these guys be a little bit hesitant, like, not really sure whether they should push in. They're sending one scout at a time. And they've got an Uber advantage. Like, they should just walk in there, use the invincibility, but it's going to be too late. Their opponents are actually going to have an Uber by the time they make the push now. So um, they're, they're kind of throwing away an advantage on the pizza party that they could have gotten away with. Uh, done a lot of damage with. Weird, though, that the Trees Fortress team is actually pushing in with an Uber of their own. Not something you usually do when you're defending last, because you're opening yourself up for a bat cap. Is, uh, oh, no, though! Popping that Uber way early. Poizo Kane actually uh, did not have to do that, and he ended up popping it. So they are going to push in with some invincible players. Trees Fortress losing a lot now, and oh, what a shot, though! Mello! Not feeling so mellow right now. He's feeling pretty pumping with adrenaline. Gonna go for the shot on the soldier as well. Didn't manage to finish him off, but that was the soldier of the heavy. I'm sorry, Chicken McBoners finishing him off. So uh, Trees Fortress going to get this picked up. I'm gonna continue talking about the leagues for just a second here as the action has died down just a little bit. Um, the ESEA League, uh, there are three divisions of ESEA. There's Open, which is open to everybody. There's Intermediate, which you have to kind of graduate from Open to get up there. And then there's Invite, where um, seven of the Invite teams are chosen by the ESEA admins. And then one Invite team is usually uh, open up for a vote by all the competitive players on the ESEA website. And that, that vote is usually between like the top Intermediate teams. So it's like they give you three choices and only one of them progresses. So it's a, it's a pretty neat league, but it's definitely the best players in North America in UG, uh, ESEA, I'm sorry, 6v6 Invite. So the Inviters are the best, and they have the best teams. Like, they're just so experienced. They're outrageously good at what they do, and they're a lot of fun to watch all the time. Um, but then this is fun to watch, too, because this gives you an idea of, like, how to improve your game. And, and you do see these players doing a pretty good job of playing 6v6. Um, some of the calls they're making are a little bit inexperienced, but they are quite good players. And uh, Gene coming in to finish off that demo man. So Trees Fortress making kind of a bad call to push out into the yard there. They lost their entire team. And that means that the Coop is doing exactly what he's got to do, rushing straight for that point. Both the scouts getting up there real fast. Cowabunga Pizza Party back on the map. It is 2-1. to one. Um, and, of course, there are other leagues as well. There's UGC Highlander, of course, which is just about the premier Highlander league in North America. Um, and that's... I mean, Highlander is a lot of fun to watch, too. They Their divisions tend to be based on the value of metals. So Platinum is the top division. They've got, like, silver and steel and tin for the Summer League, but I think they've got even more than that for uh, for fall and winter and spring when those leagues start up. And then, of course, over in Europe, you've got ETF2L, which is, like, the central league for 6v6 and 9v9. And they occasionally have other tournaments like wire play and other stuff. Uh, but in ETF2L, it works in divisions. So you've got Division 1 and Premiership, and then all the way down to Division 6, which is like all the, the newest teams. And a good middle... I'm sorry, I'm, be, I'm being super boring. But uh, a good middle fight there for our good friends in the Cowabunga Pizza Party. They're keeping their demo man nice and healed up here, and he's going to start laying down some sticky traps. Probably a good idea. Want to make sure your opponents can't get in to stop you from capping. Oh! I just hurt my jaw. And actually, I just hit myself in the head with a pan, too. So, um... Plus, yesterday I ran over my own foot with my bicycle. So all in all, <laughs> I kind of need some painkillers right now, actually. Ugh. Okay. Um, anyway, I'm not sure what's up with my jaw. Maybe I'm maybe I'm getting tetanus, getting the lock jaw, or who knows. TMJ. I saw 
comedy routine about TMJ. It was kind of funny. Not gonna, I'm not going to talk about it any more than that. But Cowabunga Pizza Party pushing in right now, dude. Tubular, radical. That's where I learned like all of my uh, <laughs> all of my synonyms for cool. Just Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Bodacious. Oh, gnarly. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, what a show. Anyway, it seems like there is a pause for some reason. So we're going to be right back after that. And we have unpaused. Sweet. Plus, doesn't look like we have too many ice skaters. Scout back there is ice skating, though. So is the demo man. Anyway, they are uh, Ubering in right now, Ubering behind. This is actually a good push here by the uh, Cowabunga Pizza Party pushing in this this side. They did lose one member, though, and they really needed to get out a little bit sooner because now, of course, the Uber is forced from blue, and they're doing a bunch of damage, taking down the coop as well. There's only two players left alive for Pizza Party right now, and that is Gene sitting back on the middle point trying to defend it from this scout back cap, or actually trying to back cap it himself. My mistake. Um, so he just might get away with it, too. So the Uber may have been all to uh, to distract from Gene here, doing his job. But, uh, no, they, they lost a lot of players to that. And Trees Fortress played the defense pretty well for having been flanked so hard. Um, anyway, some, some damage coming in right now. And boom, Gene taking down Chicken McBoners, which is, uh, sounds like a McDonald's something or other. So the most disgusting menu item you could ever order from McDonald's, possibly, but... Whatever. I'm sure somebody would. Uh, no, I mean, Pizza Party right now is, is, is partying hard on the middle point and building that Uber as fast as they possibly can. We've got the same thing from Yoshioka, damaging himself. You saw him, like, lay a sticky in front of him, and that is because he wants to make sure his med builds Uber as fast as possible. Not sure why he decided to move that cone, because he could have just left it there and tried to lay a sticky trap underneath it. It's actually a pretty common thing to do, is, is these cones, um, if you can lay sticky bombs inside of them, people won't see it coming, and so they'll walk around the corner, walk over the cone, even out in the middle of nowhere, and if you're not, uh, if you're not experienced enough to recognize that that is a trap, then you will get trapped. We've actually seen that happen before here on Sal TV. It's pretty hilarious. Um, anyway, Uber forced for both teams. Poizo Canes was just a little bit first, a little bit beforehand, and so Trees Fortress 2 can jump in now, but they're getting back capped. Got to jump back and stop this quickly, and I don't think they're going to be in time to do it. No, the uh, cap does go down, and so this medic is probably just going to have to try and stop the cap himself. A scout actually taking down the demo man, and that's going to be a back cap for Cowabunga Pizza Party. Pizza! Two to two. And pretty much that's been all of the captures, almost. is uh, Well, not all of them. Of course, Cowabunga, they did manage to get a very good cap from um, from wiping their opponents out entirely. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Not the perfect equalizer rollout, but not awful either. By the time he gets there, he will should right, be at crit heals. Oh, not quite. You see how slowly he's being healed up. That should be a lot faster. There you go. Now it's speeding up. Um, but he will be at 300 by the time he jumps, but his fellow soldier, uh, Retro T. Connors, actually will not. And a couple players getting taken out. That's You really want both your soldiers to have 300 health by the time you get here. So you got to be healing. Like, the way we do it in North America is you got one soldier using the escape plan. Uh, he damages himself really early and then stops taking any hits. And he just runs out there with the escape plan as fast as possible and meets the medic. The other one's going to be jumping with the rockets the entire time um, to get there as fast as possible. And he and the medic... Uh, the medic needs to stay on him the entire time until, like, right before they get there. And that's when... You switch over to the uh, soldier who was using the escape plan. He takes the heals. And then you just make sure they both have 300 by the time they jump in. So you, you, both your soldiers are able to get very aggressive with 300 health and four rockets and just deal a bunch of damage and eat a bunch of damage. And meanwhile, your demo man, um, you, you switch the medic to kind of start healing him and the scouts there because, you know, the soldiers got 300 health now. So you start healing somebody else for a little while. That mid fight. Anyway, that's kind of how a standard mid fight's supposed to be played. Cowabunga Pizza Party, though is uh, going to be capturing this middle point and moving on to try and damage the soldier here. He should be able to do. He'll have to back away. That's Bucket. Bucket Heart. But an Uber coming in from Tree's Fortress. Their opponent's not ready for that one at all. And they will take down Diz on the Demo Man. Which is looking pretty good for him. They do actually not manage to capture, though, before their opponents once again 
with the back cap, and I think they might be all the way on to last. No, Gene, not quite there yet. They are at risk of being pinched right now, but they do have a soldier, I think, on last point. He gets taken down by Chicken McBoners on the heavy, and there is a, yeah, there you go, the, the back cap on that second point now with the medic and Gene kind of alone. That's going to be tough to keep that medic alive. Don't know if it's going to happen or not. Uh, Gene does get a good kill on Crab, though. And there you go. They've actually got a big uber advantage. Oh, losing Floatin. Uh, to a sticky trap at that doorway, and they're going to need to pop this Uber in pretty soon, take out their opponents. Their opponents do not even have a Medic right now. I mean, this should go the way of Cowabunga Pizza Party, but they've lost a couple players. They still haven't taken down that Heavy. They finally focus him, but they haven't taken the Demo, and he can lay a bunch of sticks in the point. They take him down, and there you go. Pizza Party get, bringing it 3-2. to two. Now, UGC, I think, actually plays up to four points in the half. So that's a, a little bit different from ESEA, but I think their ban list is pretty much the same. Um... They, they all have, yeah pretty much ban the same weapons because it's kind of the way UGC wants to roll. They wanna they wanna make sure that players can kind of switch back and forth between ESEA and UGC pretty easily. So I like the idea, but their config is a little bit different than ESEA's config. ESEA forces halftime at three points. UGC allows halftime at four or thirty minutes. So uh, Cowabunga Pizza Party right now doing some. Pretty good damage to Trees Fortress, who need to back out once again. And uh, the one thing I'll say is both these teams have done a very good job of keeping their meds alive after these mid fights. Um, it's either that or they've done a very bad job of chasing down medics. But no, I mean, Frilly, this guy knows exactly where he needs to go. Just escape as fast as possible. You saw that health kit there that he could have grabbed, but he didn't even want to touch it because there was a soldier chasing him down. He just had to get back to his team as quickly as possible. And that was a good idea. Now they're they're, they're going to lose second point, but that's standard. They know that. They're not going to try and make a play for it. Instead, they're going to have the heavy up here get up on that pipe. And a high ground heavy is such a scary thing. In fact, one thing you can do with him is you can jump the heavy if, if you don't have a bunch of players jumping in here already. Um, you can jump this heavy over across this light pole all the way to this top pipe. And having a heavy on the top pipe is so scary because you're going to shut down all those enemy jumpers. Um... And there's really just nothing they can do about it. They have to focus him down. And it's so hard to hit those uh, shots on a heavy who's on the high ground. So, incoming capture by the Trees Fortress 2 team, who are all at least a 6 right now. Having to pop the Uber because a soldier came in from behind and did that. He needs to cap the point, though. Take They need to take the Uber off for a second here and cap. Otherwise, they're going to get back capped. That's not going to be a good thing for them. Um, I, even the medic here should just... Okay, no, he, he will have a, a teammate there. I think that's the heavy actually capping. But now they need to back away. They've got a problem here. And the soldier, not going to let him get away. Good communication there on the Cowabunga Pizza Party team. They're like, oh, the medic's coming to you. And he's like, okay, I'll hit him with a rocket. That'll work. And this should be a good capture, I think, for Cowabunga. Uh, they're still going to have to deal with maybe a heavy, but nope, not not in position in time, and that's going to be 4-2, to two, so it is halftime. May as well go over the scores here real quick. Dries Fortress 2 having a couple players not looking too good. Um, oh, they're switching teams now. Whatever. You do see Bello and Chicken down at 15 points apiece. Not solid. All right. Now, do you remember they've switched teams, or switched sides here in the second half? Switched colors, as it were. So we are going to see uh, Trees Fortress 2 in the red with Cowabunga Pizza Party in the blue. Um, so, of course, Cowabunga has switched from the Raphael color to the, uh, is it the Leonardo color? So is he the blue one? I think he's the blue one. Pretty awesome, I gotta say. But, oh, a little bit too aggressive there. Yoshioka, no defense from his scouts, and so he had a scout come in to flank him and take him out. The coup with the first kill of the half. Good, good jumps by the soldiers here. Dealing some decent damage to that med now, but they got to be careful that they don't get taken out because right now Tree's Fortress is in some trouble. We've got some good heals, actually. The meds are doing a very good job of keeping the team alive. And Frilly, she apparently is, uh, well, didn't take any damage until just then. Oh, no! Killed, though, by Gene on the scout. He's been going haywire this whole match. Well, not haywire. That's not the right word. He's been going crazy, though. <laughs> that's the right word. This whole match, he's been, uh, he's been doing quite a good job. So, right now it's looking like it could end pretty soon with Cowabunga Pizza Party conquering the last point here. Um, of course, they do only play to whoever gets five points first. So, if, if Cowabunga wins this, this could be the end. They've got an uber advantage. They're pushing in with it right now. Gene taking the right-hand side. Nobody really noticing him sneak in here, and he's going to go straight for the mid. The scout does try and set up some protection, though, and Frilly not going to take a lot of damage from that. The uber's already over. But, uh, oh, there you go. A lot of players actually getting lost for Cowabunga Pizza Party right now. A soldier here dealing some damage with a nice rocket. 
but it is really just T. Connor and Diz left alive, and they are going to take a bunch of hits here. Retro T. Connors dies right away. So uh, Trees Fortress with a successful defense on that last point. Well done to them. And now they're going to actually try and push out to mid. They should be able to take it. They've got Nuber advantage, and if they take mid, that is a big benefit to them because Granary is such usually is such a slow map. Um, there's so many choke points that if the enemy demo man sets up a sticky trap or something, you just cannot get through them. Um, oh, medic down though. Don't know what they were doing up there, but that's actually a little bit too aggressive play for the blue team. So uh, Cowabunga Pizza Party is in fact going to be all over them, pretty much like shingles. Kind of gross. And Gene jumping in. I mean, this is a problem here now. Cowabunga Pizza Party kind of taking you know one at a time, just jumping into a big ball of death that uh, Trees Fortress has set up. So, yeah, Trees Fortress 2 going to be able to take this down pretty well. Uh, Bucket's in some trouble here, but he will grab a kit, be just fine. Finds Retro T. Connors, and once again, that guy is down for the count. So, well done to Trees Fortress. Cap in the middle point there uh, after a pretty successful Uber. And their opponents are still two men down, including the Demo Man. Losing your demo on Granary is such a huge deal because you can't lay those sticky traps at these uh, choke points. And that means that your opponents can get in practically for free, not taking any damage until they get right on top of the blue team. The whole point behind Defender's Advantage for any situation is that you get to deal damage to the enemy before they deal damage to you. And if you don't have a demo man there, then you lose a lot of that Defender's Advantage because you can't lay down sticky traps, you can't do a lot of sticky bomb spam or pill spam. And look at that, Poison came down again. Now Trees Fortress losing a couple players just to get that medic kill, but they do have an Uber advantage. They could pop out here with Uber right now if they wanted to and start dealing some damage, and I think they will. There you go, Uber popped, taking down the soldier here, and there's only three players left alive for the red, uh, I'm sorry, the blue team right now. Cowabunga Pizza Party losing a lot of them, and so uh, Trees Fortress might just be able to turn this all the way around from their own last point to win the round. So, um, that was a lot of information coming at you all at once. But no defender's advantage at the moment, except for that sniper, and he's uh, not going to be in a position to do a heck of a lot. I'm trying to pull out the SMG now, which is not a, really a very high damage weapon. He's been bounced around. He's been kept alive by some good heals from Poison Cane. And there goes the professional seagull. Frilly. Not having the best day with that sniper rifle, apparently. Oh, wow. Uh, I tell you who is having a good day with that sniper rifle. It is the Coop. He's wrecking people with it right now. So a good little advantage here, player and uber-wise, for the blue team problem is, if you look at their uh, player list, they have no scouts. And you kind of want scouts to get in there and quickly start capping that point. Uh, the Coop can start dealing damage now, but it's taken him a little bit of time to get there. And I guess we're going to have another pause for some reason. Maybe somebody's lagging around a little bit. And unpaused they have with Mellow and uh, Chicken McBoners down for the count. They're actually bringing up an offensive heavy here for Trees Fortress 2, which is probably a pretty good idea. Um, they've got all the time in the world to put together a push. Getting the heavy out there, if they can get him in position, especially if they bring him in on the high ground, that'll be a really good thing for them. What is going on? That is an invisible player. Um, a little bit weird. But yeah, they are going to bring the heavy in, probably through the high ground. He's kind of given away that he's there. But he will be... Uh, I think they should be pushing in as soon as they have an Uber. They've got to deal with a sniper, though. The coop is still sniping. And actually, floating is... Um, this heavy needs to... What? What? what is going on? Where is the Uber right now? Oh, it's on Invincible Player. Or Invisible Player. I'm sorry. So that's... Who is that? Oh, Gene doing so much damage right now. Terrible, terrible damage. And that's going to be that. It looks like Frilly the only one to get away, and she may not even get away. I don't know. Uh, oh, no. It does get a couple of spawners here, so that is going to be okay for them. They need to take down that sniper. The coop has been really wrecking face right now. And yeah, Trees Fortress decided to back up to mid. That's, of course, the correct decision in this circumstance, unless they can really get some crazy aggression going. And right now, against a sniper, they really don't feel all that strongly about it. But a sniper is not very good for pushing into mid. So uh, that's actually going to be a little bit of a detriment, I think, to the Cowabunga Pizza Party, as he's just not going to have any lane to, to really hit people unless they decide to show their face through this choke point, which they really shouldn't be doing. Uh, so he will have to get very, very far forward just to deal any damage at all, and that puts him at risk of being spammed to death very quickly. Going for a shot here against that soldier, not able to hit it at all. And Gene already dies. This is why there's a defender's advantage. You see that blue team was trying to push in first, and uh, immediately, as soon as Gene pushed in, he died. So it already became like a 5-on-5. Five five. Now you see so many of the blue players dying, with red team having a much better uh, 
position. They've got an Uber advantage right now. Poizo Kane, actually, uh, somehow, this Uber was forced out of Frilly, but that is okay as Poizo Kane is down. And, it, oh, it's just the two players here left, which is not the greatest situation for them. Uh, this, I, th I think this demo man probably needs to jump up on the crates just to try and take down his opponent, but I don't even see the guy anymore, so. Well, we do have a little medic ragdoll hanging out over here. That doesn't look like the world's greatest sleeping position. Any. But, uh, no, right now, Tree's Fortress still able to get in and hold mid just barely for the moment. They do have a bit of an uber advantage. And they should be able to use that to push pretty soon. There is a demo man. Diz is probably laying stickies down somewhere. But I don't see where at the moment. Uh, see, it's the coop is down right now. And he's not on the sniper anymore. Actually, Tree is back here. Um, oh, they did a left side push. And they actually got around behind Cowabunga Pizza Party. So they are in a prime position to push in and cap this last point right now. Both scouts actually capping with the combo staying back to try to defend that second point a little bit just so they couldn't get back capped. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy around there. So let me see if we can find uh, we'll watch Yoshioka again. Eh, so I have an itch on my head. I think it's a mosquito bite, actually. Oh my gosh, the mosquitoes in Houston right now. They're the size of, like, Buicks. They're gigantic, and they're everywhere. It's so awful. Okay, anyway, uh, Yoshioka grabbing the health kit. Pretty normal. And, oh, predicting where his opposing demo man would come out very effectively. Diz is down to 46 health, but Yoshioka, once again, the first to die. Nobody able to follow up on that damage. Oh, there you go. They do finally follow up on the damage to Diz. He is down. Mellow takes him out with a pistol. Chicken needs to get some heals. And you notice he doesn't really want to go grab that health kit. It's, it's uh, you know, he's taking one for the team a little bit here. But if a scout grabs that health kit, the only thing it's healing is um, about 60 health, 65 maybe. Whereas if a uh, you know a soldier grabs that kit, then it's healing 100 health for the soldier. And usually you kind of want to leave them for your med anyway. So um, that's just kind of how it goes. Scouts uh, they can dodge the damage. So you usually, unless they are really far away from their medic, you don't see them grabbing those kits. They they want to leave them there from the med. It's just how it is. <clears throat> oh, um, my voice is pretty much dead now, so that's too bad. But, uh, hey, our I-46 fundraiser is nearly up to 11k, so we're very close to the point where we can just officially announce that LG's going. I'm really hoping that is the case, and oh, as soon as I say it, of course, the scout has to come back and grab that. But, I mean, they're not in combat right now. They're kind of holding choke points, so it's okay for the, the scout to just grab that when nobody else is hurt. But I uh, know we're, we're very close now for this I-46 fundraiser. We do need your help. So help us if you can. Wow, a lot of players here dying right now for our blue team. And the Uber is popped. Uh, I want to see blue actually just counter pop right now. Yeah, they need to be aggressive here and keep the players alive. Demo Man needs a little bit of a heal, but it uh, looks like the soldier is being a lot more aggressive. There is a back cap once again. And blue team, what are you doing? You can't back cap this. I, I don't even know what they're doing, but this game is going to get tied up real fast. Uh, oh, up the pop it! <laughs> that sticky trap. That could have been pretty hilarious, but it wasn't. And right now, last point just barely held on. Cowabunga Pizza Party, um, able to should be able to get that second point. There you go. They grab it, but they've lost their med again. So uh, Frilly is going to have an Uber advantage. Uh, and you see them building the uber with this scout as well using that boston basher reskin the three rune blade to hurt himself uh, of course the reason for that and i've said this like a billion times i'm sure but uh, the reason you want to hurt yourself is that you don't actually build uber at the maximum rate unless your heal target is under 140 percent i think 142 percent or something like that of maximum health so if you're healing somebody who's fully overhealed, the uber charge rate slows down. You don't build your uber charges fast. And that's why you see people hurting themselves to build that uber faster. It's just kind of how it works. And the reason you want the scout to do it is because he doesn't actually waste any ammo. A soldier or a demo man, I mean, they can hurt themselves, but they waste ammo while they do it. So it's kind of annoying. Kawabunga, uh, uh, though, losing a bunch of players here again. Med taking a lot of hits. He's going to get away for now. Poizo Kane, but in some trouble. Needs to grab a health kit, and there's just not one available. The coop dies. And I, I want to see blue team really backing off here. Well, no, never mind, because they got a bunch of kills. So Tree's Fortress not able to finish everything off. And now Poison King has a big uber advantage as well. They're going to try and push in here with Gene. Gene, the killing machine. But uh, 
Yeah, and, and people have asked, I am, in fact, going to I-46. I'm going to be doing some filming for the documentary, trying to get as many player interviews and all that kind of stuff as possible. So, you know, whether it's like a mini documentary or whatever, we're going to have a lot of footage to choose from, and uh, hopefully we will make an absolutely stellar XTV production for you guys, because uh, we've got... I think we will do it. I think it'll be an awesome, awesome production. And Mello taken down there, so it does look like a pretty good offense fight. And right now, by Cowabunga Pizza Party, it is at the moment, I think, 3 to 4. Uber coming in and really keeping a lot of the players alive. Good Uber flashing here um, to make sure these players do not die, because there were a couple players there who were pretty hurt. That soldier is in trouble, and he goes down. That's a complete wipeout, actually, for Cowabunga. So, Trees Fortress State, you just need to start capping that second point. Um,. Yeah, it's going to be a cool documentary. I don't know if we're going to, like, sell it or what, but if you donate, I'm sure you'll get some sort of benefit related to that. Uh, I hope. I guess we haven't put anything down, it like, officially. But I, I would think you should get one anyway. I guess I don't want to make any promises. Somebody's going to get mad if I do. Uh, the last point, though, already getting capped a little bit here for Trees Fortress. Let me go check that last point out. Yeah, there's a lot of defense on it right now. The Heavy just kind of standing there on the point. They've still got the coop on Sniper. And he is in a prime sniping position right now. This last point is really, really good for sniping here on Granary. Alert. The control point is being contested. But uh, Uber advantage right now for our red team, and they do lose a soldier, but they kill a soldier. I mean, I would push in, and they are. The Uber comes in right now from the top. Retro T. Connors is hanging out here, and there is a sticky trap on the point. That is not going to bode well for our red team, but uh, no, Cowabunga losing a bunch of players here. It's just that they are doing a pretty solid job on defense. Demo Man doing some good damage, though. He comes in. It's only one soldier left alive. Is he going to be able to stop this capture? No, he is not. Good cap by that demo. Yoshioka coming in with the sticky bombs. Finishing it up. It's now all tied up. Whoever wins this round wins the game in UGC 6s between Trees Fortress 2 and Cowabunga Pizza Party. Boom! So we're gonna watch this roll out here from Yoshioka. It's uh that particular sticky jump, by the way, you usually don't want to jump. Just kind of walk over it and crouch, and that'll give you just enough air time that the sticky bomb will propel you forward horizontally, and uh, not a lot of vertical. So you can kind of sneak through the, uh, the doorway there and straight onto the health kit. It's a little bit faster. Good prediction by Yoshioka on that uh, soldier there. So he is very lit right now. Very very hurt. Lit, another word for hurt that they use in uh, in competitive, you know, kind of short for lit up. <clears throat> of course, they also use ripped, ripped apart, I think, or maybe ripped is a uh, kind of a euphemism for another word that sounds a little bit similar, but that is rather rude. I'm not gonna go there. They do use that one too, though, which is why you don't always see you don't always see mumble comms, especially not you know marked as safe for work. Oh, good Uber here, though. Poison Kane dropping the Uber of his own. And this is looking really solid for Trees Fortress. I think they should have this right now. They need to leave one person back to cap that while the rest of them push forward. Watch the stickies on the point. There is a Demo Man right now who is taking some damage, but he's still going to have that point trapped. There you go. He does get taken out. Trees Fortress is going to have this. The soldier trying his best to defend, but it doesn't matter. And that is the game. Hello, hello, hello. Well done to Trees Fortress. They, uh, they win. And I don't know exactly where we are in the UGC Sixes League right now, but an incredible game there out of both teams looking quite solid. So hopefully you guys subscribe, like, comment, donate to the I-46 thing. That's what I really want you to do. Um, and if you are here from the Yogs cast, if you're one of those guys who was like, oh, I kind of like this Team Fortress 2 stuff, well, do stick around. Watch me here. Uh, watch me on twitch.tv slash fatmop. Um, XTV, twitch.tv slash EXTV Esports is where we do all of our official X-Television casting and other wonderful stuffs. Extra Vision is your weekly news show for Team Fortress 2. I mean, there's so much good stuff out there that you need to check out uh, because Competitive TF2 is actually a nice little niche scene. It's growing, and we're doing a pretty good job with uh, growing the quality and the consistency of the production at XTV as well. So, you know, I'm pretty excited about where we're moving forward to. I just I think the viewers need to follow. We need to, we need more viewers here, basically, for, for this scene. Because it's such a fun sport to watch, in my opinion. Uh, and, and I think the, the number of people who are realizing that is growing. So, thank you guys for your support, and for uh, continuing to put up with my voice and my awful, awful jokes. I'll see you next time.